Okay, welcome back. Happy Thursday morning, everybody. We're 10 minutes away from the open. Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen set to testify before the Senate Banking Committee at the top of the hour, about uh, 40 minutes away. The Wall Street Journal's chief economics correspondent, John Hilgenrath, is joining me now from D.C. with his analysis. Hey, John, good morning. Hey, Maria. Uh, good morning. What are you expecting from Janet Yellen? Tell us uh, how you see it playing out. You, you know, I, I think for Janet Yellen and for the Fed, the first quarter has turned out to be a wash. You know, with these durable goods numbers today, it looks like GDP growth in the first quarter is like 2% or less. But they're looking through it because they don't trust the numbers because of the weather and seasonal adjustments. We're not going to know for at least several more weeks what kind of path this economy is on. So she's steady as she goes. Keep tapering and hold off expectations on when they're going to raise rates. That's I feel the bottom like, line. I feel like anything she says about tapering will be newsworthy. I mean, would it be your assessment that we just continue to see $10 billion a month, $10 billion a month, cut, 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 and then we're out of QE by the end of the year or early 2015? Well, well, this is why these numbers are so important right now. The Fed keeps tapering unless the data uh, shows them that the economy is off to a worse track than they realize. And they just don't trust the numbers. So that we're not going to know, which means the tapering keeps going at least into April until they see better data that they can really make, make better forecasts on. John, it's Terry Duffy. Um, a question for you. The Fed is sitting on basically $3 trillion on its balance sheet today between mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. If, right. in fact, we have some inflation uh, coming yeah. at us, and the, that position looks like it's going to go under a water a little bit, do you see that position getting politicized and her now turning into more of a political person versus uh, an independent Fed chair? Uh, I mean, it's been politicized really from the get-go. So, yeah, I think it's something that they're worried about and they're looking about. And here's a little nuance in her testimony that I'm going to be looking for. The Fed has been playing with a lot of tools to manage interest rates, even with a $3 trillion, $4 trillion uh, dollar balance sheet. And so I want to hear what she says about these tools. They're doing something called reverse repos right. that they think is going to allow them to manage interest rates even with a, giant, a gigantic balance sheet. And people in the markets are very interested to hear how serious they are about this reverse repo program. I don't know if any senator is going to ask her about it, but I'd love to hear her talking yeah. about that because that's really the, the way that they're going to be managing an inflation uh, takeoff if it happens. Well, I mean, for so long the Fed has talked about the fact that it's been all the Fed, right? I mean, the stimulus is coming from the Federal Reserve and we don't have any fiscal yeah. stim stimulus. Do you think that's going to come up today? I mean, how much can she say about the fact that if you really want to see the, the needle move, you've got to see tax reform, you've got to see, yeah. you know, immigration reform, et cetera? You know, I was interested when she uh, spoke in the House, she was willing to go to issues that the Fed usually hasn't been willing to go to in the past, like uh, income inequality. I mean, I think budget issues definitely come up. Uh, and the Fed has had a pretty consistent storyline here. They want less fiscal restraint in the short run, but a plan for the long run to deal with deficits, not in the next five years, but in the next 10 to 20 years. That's what Bernanke has said. I think she stays uh, on that line. Maybe she's a little bit more aggressive about pushing it on. But you know what? Congress isn't listening. I want, I want to ask you your thoughts on interest rates because, Terry, your business, you've got right. probably the, the most sensitive business in terms of rates. And once rates start moving higher, right. a lot of the analysts out there are saying this is incredibly bullish for you. What's your product lineup look like once, in fact, we see rates start moving? Well, I think once we get into a more normalized rate environment, which we will over time, and I, you know, when you were saying uh, about the tapering of $10 billion a month con continuing to go forward, I think it almost has to because if she doesn't do that, we signaled in December that's what we're going to do. Once we back away from that, I think it could hurt the overall equity market by saying the economy is not near as strong as the Fed thought it was. So. I think we're going to continue to see the tapering going. I think we're going to get into a more normalized rate environment. People need to manage those rates. Interest rates are sensitive to every single product that we trade in this world, no matter what it is. So I think that will bode well for our interest rate products throughout the Treasury complex and our yield dollar complex. Yeah. So, John, hey, do, hey, you, Marie, do you think I wanna, rates... I, I want to throw yeah. in one, one point here, which is I think the story is moving past tapering. I think that was the 2013 story. The 2014 story is when does the Fed start raising rates? Exactly. Um, you know, right now they're, they, they say Say they're on hold, you know, at least into mid-2015. But the debate is shifting. We wrote about this a few weeks ago. And I'm also looking at the Bank of England. Their debate is shifting. They're a little at, uh, further ahead of the curve compared to the U.S. 
they're talking about this. They're talking about when rate hikes come. And I think that's, assuming we get through this patch of weak data, I think when we get into the second half of this year, that becomes the discussion that really starts to obsess the markets the way tapering did last year. Are you saying you think rates start moving higher in 2014, John? Uh, I, I'm saying that the discussion moves in that direction. That's not where the Fed wants it. The Fed right now thinks it's going to be in 2015. But if we come out of this soft patch with strong data and inflation getting up, that's really going to force them to have a conversation that's going to make a lot of people very uncomfortable. So, so you're, you're all geared up for this. I like what John's saying. Exactly. I know you do. <laughs> all right, John, thank you so much. We'll be watching the testimony. Right. John Hilsenrath uh, joining Terry Duffy and myself. He is in Washington. We are in New York, and we are five minutes away from the opening bell. When we come right back, we'll talk more with the chairman and president of CME Group, Terry Duffy. He'll tell us what he sees for some of those uh, products as rates start rising in 2014 and into 15. And then Blackstone. Big